Hey guys, how's it going? If you're reading this title up here, then you probably know what this is for. So, um, if you don't know how to read or you have a reading problem, this is another review for a cool little accessory to your PlayStation 1 and probably works on your PlayStation 2 games as well. I haven't tried it yet, but this is the dual analog controller made by Sony for the PlayStation 1. And this is not a DualShock controller. I repeat, this is not a DualShock controller. This actually is what came out before, and the DualShock was modeled after this controller right here. So, um, you know, I had my DualShock 2 out. I was playing some Soul Reaver 2 last night, and I had my DualShock 2 out. So I said, you know, I'll put this in the video too, just to show some differences. Because there are differences on this controller, uh, and there's some very big differences. You probably already spotted one of them when I first sold the controller up. So, yeah, here's the size, first of all. Uh, you probably noticed some size differences. I'll get to that. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but... Let's start off with the thumbsticks. Now, there is a big difference in these thumbsticks compared to the DualShock. Okay, here's our uh, dual analog, and here's our DualShock. Also, this is the same kind of concept as a DualShock 1, so the DualShock 2 works fine. But take a look at the thumbsticks, you know, your average thumbsticks. Everyone's probably used to seeing but look at the difference. First of all, there is no rubber coating, and this is a plastic texture. Also, there is an indent, indented kind of concave deal on the um, analog thumbsticks, and I gotta tell you, it doesn't make a huge difference, but it makes enough of a difference. So it's a very, very, uh, very comfortable controller to use. I mean, I, I've I love this controller. It's these thumbsticks are great. I mean, one thing is they have a little less resistance than the DualShock has, so they're a little bit more to get used to. Um, they they go a little easier. Controls are a little bit more um, slippery, I guess you would say, until you get used to the thumbsticks resistance. But it's not that much of a difference. It's just a little bit. Like a, it's a little bit easier for these thumbsticks to move. They're a little bit more free. Biggest, biggest difference I could think of. And again, that's not a major gripe. So let's get on to our shoulder buttons up top. Yeah, there is a difference. Tell me if you can spot the difference. I'll put it like this. Did you spot it? How about like this? Well, if you didn't, take a look at these L2 and R2 buttons. Right? They're nice and smooth. A uh, little bit of plastic in between. Well, take a look at these. Yes, there is a ridge on each of these buttons, plus a little bit more plastic in between. So, this ridge is, is excellent. I mean, the spacing is excellent. You don't have worry about your fingers getting cramped or too close to each other. Like, I mean, the DualShock's cool too. It has a nice spacing, but sometimes I think my fingers rub together a little bit. It's a little tight. But this eliminates all that tightness and has a nice grouping and spacing of the of the the buttons, and those ridges are they help you a lot. Let me tell you, and to keep your fingers nice and spaced out, your uh, no cramps, whatever. But another thing, let's spot another difference here. Um, the handle grips. See if you can tell me a difference in the handle grips. Take a look. Anything? I'm trying to hold them as even as possible, and you probably should see that the DualShock is probably about uh, an inch shorter in the handle grips. So, I mean, if you're holding the DualShock, you, you find your thumbs slipping off a lot. I mean, I'm just, I'm holding it right here, and my thumbs, you see, they're, they're very, very on the bottom, and they're kind of slipping off a little bit. I'm trying to hold it as comfortably as possible, but I had that almost no place to put my thumbs. But on the dual analog here, look at all this room. I mean, here's my thumbs down here. Look at all that room I got. They're right on there. I mean, there's a full inch of extra plastic on the bottom. That's That, to me, is the biggest difference and the most comfortable difference that I can see between these two controllers. And um, this is excellent. This is an absolute excellent controller. Uh, I can tell you right now, I like this controller better than a DualShock. But there is one major difference that makes this controller less desirable than a DualShock. But... I don't think it matters too much for older games because I'm playing PS1 games on this and most games, guess what? 
This doesn't have a rumble feature. Yeah, sorry guys, there's no rumble feature in this. There is absolutely no motors in these controllers at all, compared to two motors in your DualShock 1 and DualShock 2 and DualShock 3. But um, this is a bit of a heftier controller. It's a little bit heavier because it has those motors in there. But this, uh, most games I play for PS1 tend to not have a rumble feature until about 97 or 98. Around 98, I think, they started using rumble. So before the, this came out in 97, also, let's note right now, this was made in Japan, not China. The DualShock 1 was made in China, as far as I know. So, that is another difference, a slight difference. Also, the cord, the cord thickness of the controllers, um, it's hard to see on camera, but the dual analog cord is actually a little bit thicker than the dual shock. And I, I do have a dual shock one in the drawer. Um, it's a little wrapped up right now, you know, the classic deal. So I'm not going to get it out. But the cord is a little thinner than the dual shock. That's another small little gripe. The shielding is a bit better, I would imagine, because the wire's thicker. But also, one small difference is the controller port size. Take a look. As you see, it's probably a little bit, it's a little bit smaller. As you can see, not a big difference. Just, just a difference. But I think the rumble feature is what really put this controller out of business, because this came out in '97, and you know it only lasted less than a year on the market. Because at the time, um, a lot of games didn't use these. Um, if you remember your flight stick, the flight sticks for Sony, this actually works with flight stick games, and um, this doesn't. So that's one. That's another advantage that the dual analog has over the DualShock. You can use your flight sticks, uh, flight stick games right on here, and it works. That's cool. So that's another little advantage. I thought it was pretty neat. So yeah, uh, differences between the controller. Which one do I like better? Hard to say. The rumble versus smaller hand grips. You know, it's kind of a, you know, each, each one has their own advantages. Bigger hand grips, you know, you have more to grab onto. And you can play more comfortably without having your pinky slip off or whatever. But on the other hand, you have rumble, which enhances your gameplay. And makes you feel maybe more interacted into the game. I'll take the longer hand grips any day. But the problem is, this may not work on all your PS2 games. Because this came out in 97, if you do recall. I know the DualShock works on PS2 games, but um, I'm not sure if the Dual Analog works on all PS2 games. The cord seems to actually be a little bit longer than the DualShock 2. I don't know about the DualShock 1, because I haven't actually measured it. But the cord seems to be a little bit longer on the DualShock 1. I mean, on, on the Dual Analog. I mean, not longer, shorter. Sorry, shorter. <laughs> I messed up three times saying that. But yeah, the cord seems to be a little bit shorter. I don't know, just not, probably not by much, but it seems a little bit shorter in the long run. The standard, I think, six feet or whatever, six or seven feet on the plane. It's probably, I don't know what it is. But it seems a little bit shorter. And... That's mainly the differences between the two controllers. I know I've been rambling on and rambling on, but these two controllers, even though they look similar, they're actually very different. Very different controllers. And these are a lot rarer. I picked this up for 10 bucks. So they are out there, guys. Just keep your eyes peeled. And uh, if you see one for cheap, really pick it up. You'll have a good time. You mostly see these. What you're looking for is these these nice long indented thun, um, nice long handle grips and then dented thumbsticks. That's what you're looking for. Big differences in the controller. So guys, uh, with that said, I'm going to conclude this little review of sorts. If you like this video, tell me down here, cause uh, hey, and you can also subscribe up here. You know, whatever. I'd appreciate it. Uh, have a lot more videos up, check them out, and I am Matt, and I hope you could dig it.